So hello everyone, it's the Cricket Connoisseur here and welcome to episode 11 of the TCC Talks podcast. Now today I'm joined by someone who will be very familiar to any fans of county cricket out there. It is none other than Yorkshire leg spinner and host of the Spin Badger podcast, Josh Poisden. So first things first, Josh, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast today. How's your day been so far, mate? Uh, yeah, pretty chilled actually, I guess quite early. Um, but yeah, just um, normal day at the moment, I guess, as we kind of come out of lockdown and get closer to playing some cricket. Just did uh, a bit of fitness work this morning. Um, and then, yeah, they're now on to this. So good start to the day. Yeah, very busy start to the day, I must admit. But um, yeah, I think the best place to kickstart this podcast really is right at the beginning of your career, Josh. So what was your first ever memory of cricket, either playing or watching the game? Um, probably just going to watch my dad when I was younger. Like he played club cricket in Sussex, where I'm from originally, and used to go and watch him. And I guess you know, run around the boundary and playing the nets, all those kind of things that uh, will be familiar to a lot of people in, in how they get into the game. Uh, I think in terms of watching, like I used to go and watch Sussex when I was you know really young. It used to be like a ten minute walk from my school, so you know, I walked down there, and um, that was when they were quite successful. So you know like Mushtaq Ahmed playing, people like that. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's probably my very early days in, in cricket. Well, yeah, as you mentioned, quite a few cricketers, that's how they get in through family members and yeah. I just mentioned your dad. So, back then, who were your biggest cricket inspirations? Like, which cricketers did you really look up to? Um, I think, like, I started bowling uh, leg spin quite young, so I guess, like, you get that real uh, affinity to leg spinners. So, uh, that was kind of when Shane Warne was, well, obviously he had a lot of uh, success throughout his career, but, you know, he was really doing well in that, in that time, pretty much in his prime. So, you know, watching him bowl, um, mentioned Mushtaq Ahmed, uh, watching him bowl at Sussex, and basically any, watching any leg spinners, really, I think, you know, any time that there was some more leg spin on TV, you kind of sit up and take notice. And although back then I probably just thought I was doing it because, well, because I enjoyed it, I think probably subconsciously learning and, and seeing bits and bobs as well. Well, talking of that leg spin, what made you choose leg spin? Because, I mean, obviously, it's in my opinion, it's probably the hardest bowling form. What made you choose leg spin over the likes of off spin or seam? Uh, I think just just naturally, I think I did it. Like I was I was actually a wiki until I was 12, but like I said, I was always mucking around the net, so I probably tried all sorts, like, you know. And then I, I, just, I remember one day, it was actually before... Uh, Mushy signed at Sussex, so, you know, probably wasn't him that made me start bowling, but I remember just mucking around the nets and bowling leg spin and it coming out quite nicely, I think, you know, uh, bowling like with an incredible, like, they used to rag, so if you could spin it, it was quite good, so uh, I guess just that mucking around in the nets and enjoying it and then realised that I was actually okay at it, whether that was talent or just because I was always in the nets, like, and then, yeah, from then kind of stuck with it, and like you said, although a lot of people say it's the hardest thing, like, if someone can do it and they can do it well, people tend to sit up and take notice. So although it is hard, it also can be very rewarding as well. Well, of course, yeah. You look at the likes of Rashid Khan, for example, one of the greats of the modern era. And yeah, exactly. It is the hardest one to play as well, especially if you've got a good wrong gun. But um, yeah, what's your favourite delivery with spin? Because you have got a few variations. I mean, you've got quite a nice leg break. Uh, what's your favourite variation of, of leg spin? Uh, yeah, I just think like it's, it's just that you're... Although it's really fun bomb variations, the thing that's most important is is your stop ball. So for me, that's my leg spinner. And, you know, that's what you go to when you want to attack and take wickets. That's what you go to uh, if you're going to try and defend, like, your best your best ball. So for me, being a leg spinner, that's what's most important. Like I said, do variations. but And you know, in the right scenario, if that's the right ball to bowl, you obviously go to those. But, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, your real kind of breadwinner is your, is your stop ball. Yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> you should go to, isn't it, really? But, um, yeah, from those early days, obviously, as you mentioned, around the, the local club, really, you went and joined the Unicorns. So, for those who don't know, the Unicorns, they used to play in the CB40 in 2010, I believe. Um, how did you find your, your experience? How did you find your time with the Unicorns? Yeah, it was obviously a bit of a different era. You know, it's not yeah. Unicorns aren't going in the county competition anymore but I think yeah it was for me it was brilliant it was integral to my development and getting spotted I guess so that unicorns team that like, I got put forward for it um, at uni where I was at I played for the Cambridge MCCU team which again was like, also massive in my development having 
three years training there. And then my last year I played for the Unicorns and it was actually a pretty extensive trialing process like because anyone could play for them really if they were nominated. You know, they used to do massive trials. Like, I think there was 40 people at like six different regional trials and that went through to like 50 people at a national trial then eventually a squad of 30 and then you obviously the match day squad of 15 for the game. So it was quite a crawling process to get through. But, you know, once I did, I had that, uh, that opportunity to play. And, you know, first of all, from a, I get, yeah, like I said, opportunity, you're literally playing in the in county first team cricket. So if you do well, people tend, you know, to pay attention to it. Um, and then I had a bit of success in that year. I, I did miss a lot of the games because I had a, Bad finger break, but again, when I you know when I played, I did all right, which I, which I, well, I know that's um, kind of how I end up at Warwickshire. But also that from a learning point of view, if you play in the first team cricket, like you get used to it, so and you you know you can do it, and you have that belief, and you learn what it's all about. So when I did go on to make my first team day before Warwickshire, I'd kind of already been there for unicorns, and I guess when you're playing for unicorns in a day, like you're massive underdogs, you're playing against you know teams of professional cricketers when we're all amateurs so to actually be on a professional team and not be getting pumped most games like it was it was really nice and I guess almost a bit easier when I was playing for Warwickshire when I played for the Unicorns. Well, yeah the Unicorns no longer exist unfortunately I think they were disbanding in 2018 I believe but uh, yeah I actually, they're still playing in the second team competition maybe I'm not sure though. I, I don't they're, think they are I, uh, I didn't, I didn't see them. Changed, I don't know I don't know what they've done there. <laughs> we'll find out we'll find out at some point. But um, yeah, as you just alluded to, 2014, you made the move to arguably the best county in England, uh, Warwickshire. So well, I, how did it? <laughs> yeah, not being biased. But um, how did it feel to make your debut for Warwickshire? Because obviously they are one of the main counties. How big of of an occasion was that? Yeah, it was amazing. That, like I said, like been playing cricket since I was little, and I guess it's most kids' dream to go on and and play professional cricket. And I think that especially the journey I had of going to uni, you know, battling my way through the unicorns. Like that was, that was a really nice moment. Uh, you know, it's made my debut for Warwickshire. I've been, it's quite nice because I've been, been on trial for that, basically the whole of that season. I think it was end of July. So I've, I've been around this time. So I've actually felt, although it was my debut, I guess I was actually fairly settled in terms of being in with the lads and everyone made me feel really welcome. And yeah, it was just uh, special. I think according to the, it was a T20 on a Friday. Got called to squad on Thursday and thought didn't expect to play, but mum and dad came up anyway and then uh, came to it and yeah, got picked and you know they were there to watch that. So that was uh, that was a really special day. Oh yeah, great club as well. But um, yeah, during your time at Warwickshire, wasn't it 2015? You actually appeared in the Ashes. You appeared at the Edgebaston Test when we absolutely smashed Australia. We beat them in three days, I believe. How nervous were you making your your appearance on the field yeah I guess you know just a subfield I wasn't playing or anything but uh yeah it was yeah nervous is definitely one way to describe it like I said because I had a bit of a funny journey into the game like you know to I didn't sign my first contract till like year 2015 so I was basically just felt like I was living my dream anyway so then when one day I just found myself walking down the steps at edge busting behind you know Alistair Cook with Jerusalem playing it was just to a full house it was just uh I guess even more surreal and I guess for like a you know a long period of my career just you know everything seemed to be getting better all the time and that was that was amazing like um played a lot of cricket in in Sydney so I knew all my Aussie mates would be watching obviously all my English mates were watching so uh you know definitely definitely nerve-wracking but um I think it's one of those things you look back and you just think oh that was amazing but you know remember at the time that you were you know, heart was beating a little bit, but um, yeah, it was it was really good fun. Well, yeah, you took you dismissed Mitchell Start, wasn't it, in the second innings? Um, took the catch, yeah. I wouldn't say dismissed. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> took the catch then, but um, yeah, you've just alluded to your time in Australia. I was actually going to ask about that. You played for the Gordon Cricket Club, one of the oldest and most prestigious ones in Sydney. How would you how would you describe the the difference between Aussie grade cricket? and English club cricket? What's the what's the differences like? That's a good question. I think I, I played for Northern District as well in Sydney. I'll get that in there because they're them and Gordon are local rivals. So it was uh, okay. interesting that I played for both and can't leave one of them out. But uh, but yeah, it's very different. I think like, I guess the grade cricket setup is probably just a bit more professional. There's, 
when when I went especially when I was eight, well, there's like every every grade club has five teams, um, and you know all five of those teams will train you know twice a week. If you miss training, you don't play like very you know professional and even you know fifth grade it's taken really seriously. So actually when I went out when I was eighteen, I started in fifth grade, which was an experience. But it's you know it's it's just quite hard cricket. You know they play two day cricket over two weeks, which probably lends itself to digging in a bit more because people know that if they get out they might not bat for another three weeks and just different really like the wickets wickets are better but there's definitely pluses and minuses in both like I think the way a lot English cricket's set up a lot of the time you know you actually get some really skillful batters because the wickets can be quite tricky so you know people are, can be good at pay, playing the seaming or spinning ball where it's quite flat in Australia so and also with bowlers really like you know I guess there's a lot more on offer in England, so the bowlers are probably a bit more skillful, but equally, because there's not as much on offer in Australia, the seamers are probably have to bowl a bit quicker. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely different, but I think, like, you know, you hear great, like, great cricketers say, oh, you know, like, you'd be playing first grade, and they're like, oh, you know, what's what's this like? Is this like the same as first class cricket? And, like, it's definitely not. Like, <laughs> probably, like, well, it's definitely under second team cricket over here, like, county cricket. So, but you do, yeah, I think... Uh, Aussies aren't shy of thinking that grade cricket is like the best best cricket in the world, which is a good standard. But yeah, I think it's you know not the same as professional cricket by any stretch. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, Mark Watts. Um, if you know Mark Watts, got the spin. He was talking about that the other day. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting the differences. Definitely, also in terms of culture as well. Were you uh, sledged a lot in your time in Australia? Uh, actually, not really. Like probably, you know batting down the order you don't really get it as much just being like a, you know just a little leg spinner like you're not going to get as much chat um like I mentioned I moved clubs and when I played against Gordon where like a lot of my good mates and not some of the best mates in the world are there so when we played against them that was obviously interesting um but I think I did night watch one a couple of times that's probably when you get it the most but but no, nothing like horrific like it's definitely in my experience it's worse over here like you know when I'm not playing for Yorkshire, um, playing the Bradford League, and that's um, yeah, it's some interesting behaviours on show. <laughs> that's quite interesting, to be fair. But um, yeah, kind of retracting back to your time at Warwickshire, you spent a good four seasons at Warwickshire. What's your favourite memory with the Bears? Um, that's a hard one. I guess we had quite a bit of success uh, when I was there, which was which was brilliant. The, the best thing was like like I said, I. I went there on trial, you know, just desperate to play cricket anyway. So to end up to playing for a club as big as Warwickshire was amazing and kind of that journey and how it transpired. And like when I was uh, there in 2014, that second team was, you know, people like Sam Hayne in it. Um, <laughs> so I guess like people like Haney and those two lads, I don't remember, like Johnny Webb, Freddie Coleman, you know, like Paul Best, like that, that team we had, like in the, even in the second team, like some mates who are like basically mates for life now. So, like, I guess the friendships that I made there were amazing. And, um, you know, Ollie Hannon Dolby is another one who, it wasn't in the second team, then he's in the first team, but, you know, he's a really close mate. So, to have kind of four or five years there and, and build those friendships with those guys. And while having that, you know, a bit of success as a squad, like it was, it was a, a really, really special time, really. And I really enjoyed, you know, every minute. That's nice to hear. But uh, yeah, obviously 2016 beat Surrey in the Royal London One Day Cup. 2018 won Division 2, uh, got promotion. And uh, yes, you left at the end of the 2018 season, fortunately. Um, I moved to Yorkshire, which obviously is thoroughly on display right now. But um, yeah, how have you found your, your time with Yorkshire so far? Been enjoying it? It's been brilliant. Like, like I said, with Warwickshire, you know, one of the biggest clubs, and I think Yorkshire's probably one of the only clubs that's arguably bigger than Warwickshire, you know, with. Well, county, the, yeah. You know, the history they've had of uh, winning the county championship more than anyone else. And then you have to look at the current squad to see some of the people. Like, it was an amazing opportunity for me to, to come and move a bit further north and, and represent the club. And, you know, like, I think one thing that was always amazing at Warwickshire was playing and learning from Jeets. But, you know, that meant I was always second spinner. So when the chance came up to potentially play a bit more cricket, that was a bit of a no-brainer for me, really. Um, you know, it was it was sad to leave work. She only my great mates, like I said, but, I, you know, did not even think about it when this opportunity came up. Um, it's been brilliant to take it. I remember on my, on my debut around the change room and it was like, 
you know, you've got Root, Bairstow, Kay Williamson, you know, and that's about people like Adil Rashid, David Willey. So, you know, it's a, a massive club and, and some massive players. And I'm, I'm a big believer that that's a massive way to learn is, is bowling at the best and, and talking to some of the best players. So, you know, it's been, it's been brilliant. It's been a bit of a, I guess the last two years been a bit funny with uh, getting injured last year. And then now with Corona, probably haven't um, been able to, like we just, you know, just haven't had um, kind of the time to play yet. But, you know, hopefully we get some cricket this year and then um, going forward, there's, there's that time to uh, put in some really good performances for Yorkshire. Well, yeah, you, you just alluded to your injury. That was quite a horrific injury, wasn't it? Do you just want to almost detail what happened and how you actually overcame that injury? Yeah, I'd say it, like, it sounds worse than it is. So I was actually fine basically the whole time. But okay. um, basically just throwing uh, to one of the lads in the net, swacked it, but like, just throwing off spin probably serves me right rather than bowling. And then uh, basically just whacked one back at me in T20 practice, ball hit me on the side of the head and then had a fractured skull, uh, internal bleeding in my head and a bit of um, bruising on the brain. So like I said, it sounds really bad. But, you know, I, was, I wasn't great for about six, maybe like six hours. I was, you know, struggling a little bit, didn't feel great. And then after that, I just kind of had a headache for a couple of weeks. And then from then on in, I just made a full recovery and touch wood has all been fine so far and no complications. But it was obviously frustrating. Like I had to miss the rest of the season because I couldn't risk a, a second impact on it. I couldn't drive for six, seven months. Like, you know, it was, um, you know, it was definitely a frustrating injury. but. I think when you hear that diagnosis, you're just grateful that it wasn't worse because you only have to look at the terrible uh, Phil Hughes incident yep. to see that, you know, if you get hit in that specific place, you know, it's it's not great. I know, of course. How did you actually keep yourself entertained during that period, though? What what did you look upon outside of the game? So I obviously had to, like, chill out for a couple of weeks and not, not do much. Then then on, like, you know, when they said I couldn't play cricket, the next question I asked was, can I play golf? And they said, uh, only if I wear protection. So I guess I entered a bit of negotiation with the specialist and they basically said if I... Originally, they wanted me to wear my cricket helmet on the golf course, which would have been interesting. <laughs> but, uh, and I negotiated that down to wearing, like, one of the bump caps you see, like, builders wear. So it's kind of like a normal baseball cap with like a really hard shell in it yeah so I, like, I basically just went on a golf tour for the rest of the summer I uh, uh, just went all you know up to Scotland um, all around England my uh, one I spoke earlier about how some of my best mates in the world played for Gordon like one of those uh, got married so I was at like and he was getting married in Australia in September which I thought you know there's no way I'm going to be able to go there during the season but um Luckily, because I couldn't do anything, the club let me go. Um, so I went out for that and got, got engaged while I was out there. So it was actually quite a, a busy time, really. But, you know, all the time is in the back of my mind. Like, I'd much rather be playing cricket. So it was, uh, it was a shame to miss the rest of the season. You do like your golf, though. And um, you write for a website, don't you, as well? Um, what's, what's the name of the, the golf website that you I write for? So, I guess same as the podcast, like during lockdown, trying to keep myself busy and... Just got in contact with National Club Golf and Magazine and uh, just been writing a few articles, I guess, like there. So far, the main, you know, theme has been comparing cricket and golf. So that's, that's, I really enjoyed that so far. And I guess, like, you know, lockdown's been a chance for, especially for cricketers who've been furloughed and can't train properly, that chance to do a bit of personal development and, and try a few, few things out. So that's been something that I didn't expect to be doing this summer, but it's actually been, uh, quite enjoyable like dealing with those guys and, and trying a bit of writing so it's been good fun well yeah and as you said <laughs> keep your mind off it doesn't it really the the lack of cricket and uh yes as you just mentioned the spin badger podcast which is pretty much brand new five episodes in um what made you actually create the, the spin badger podcast what was the inspiration behind that yeah like I, f I thought about it at the start of lockdown and thought like oh that's you know gonna be a lot of work i don't know how to do it and like that and then the more I kind of thought about it and looked into it, I just thought it'd be a good idea. Like spin bowling such a, is, is a unique thing, and especially leg spin, but you know, it's all spinners is. So a lot of the best learnings I've had have been speaking to spinners around the world. So, you know, like you said, you, um, Jeet's been a massive mentor for me. Stuart McGill in Australia is um, also another mentor. He's really big. Even just playing against spinners like um, 
you know, say, for example, Jeremy Tom Warwick, who played against West Indies in a pre-season game and speaking to Samuel Badgery, like, you know, those, those kind of conversations are where you really learn a lot of things. So I think that I wanted to share those com- conversations so that, you know, young spinners or spinners, spinners of any ages, they could kind of um, pick up on the real, real finer kind of details of it and the tips of it. And, you know, I also hope that career coaches in general can listen to it and then hopefully they might be able to be a bit more informed of some of the coaching they, they give spinners. Um, and then I guess, you know, I want to, hopefully it's relatively entertaining as well and try and keep it not too not too serious but you know I guess the main main idea and goal is to try and uh share that information that that uh spinners have oh yeah it's a very good podcast I must admit I've, I've been listening to it especially the G10 Patel one as a Warwick fan and an off spinner that was very very interesting also had Ish Sodi on there Matt Parkinson uh Keshav Maharaj he's been your your latest guest on there as well um how do you actually get these guests on because I've been asked this quite frequently actually uh, with hosting this podcast what's your method about going getting these guests on how do you actually get them on the podcast uh well i think like like i said i've had a lot of these conversations and basically everyone that i've had on and probably will have on is someone that i've got a bit of a relationship with already like i've always always tried really hard to when you play against spinners just talk to them and i guess while i'm doing it to learn you do kind of end up building a bit of a relationship and I think like, you know, everyone's in cricket, there's a lot of good guys and people are happy to to give up their time and, and kind of spread their, their jerk, like, you know, share their journey and, and spread the information they have. So like, you know, I guess I kind of started with a few people that I definitely wanted to get on. So like, um, Parky definitely is a really good mate and we talk a lot about bowling. Um, I recorded so many students and girls, so getting like sharing his stuff, Jeets, obviously, you know, those... And then you kind of go from there and you kind of think and you think, all oh, right, he'd be a brilliant guest. Like Kesh, for example, I spent a little bit of time with last summer and it was interesting to talk to him about bowling. But then when you actually sit down and formally do it and some of the information he shared, like you're actually, oh, this is good. And I guess like a small part of it is for me, you know, as current spinner, you're kind of learning and thinking about stuff as well. So it's, it has been a bit of work at times, but, you know, I've learned a lot. How, how to make a podcast and also about <laughs> inbowling so it has you know it's it has on the whole been an enjoyable process <laughs> yeah i'm glad you mentioned that at the end making a podcast is actually a lot harder than you think it is mm. um a lot of prep goes into it and as you the guests like yeah it's, it's it's quite difficult to get guests on sometimes but uh yeah it's definitely worth it. it's worth it for these conversations really so if anyone does want to start a podcast get it going, get preparing for it, practice, obviously, your introductions and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, just go for it. I mean, I'm 11 episodes into mine, obviously still very new, but, uh, yeah, it's gone well so far. I'm very much enjoying it. But, um, yeah, talking of Stuart McGill, Stuart McGill mentioned something that I actually found very interesting. He said you'd make a very good coach of leg spin. So my question to you now, Josh, is what would your plans be post-cricket? Would, would coaching be an avenue that you'd look into? Definitely, I think first and foremost, like, I want to have a really good playing career. There's still a lot I really want to achieve in the game, so that's my my main focus at the moment. And you know, it's really kind of stupid to say that, but you know, I want to say that, you know, I, I do, I do have a lot um, I still want to achieve in the game. So that's the main thing. But you know, when that time comes and you finish cricket, like coaching is definitely something I'm interested in. I've done quite a bit already throughout my my playing career and I guess that was also another thing with the podcast if I can kind of show that I really think about the coaching side of it and about helping younger players you know hopefully that's something that can be positive for me when I finish playing so uh so yeah so I think definitely coaching but I I think also you know I've done my level three which is one under that you know that the most uh qualified you can be so that's been that was a really good experience last year uh, and then, yeah, I guess also like keeping your options open. Like I say, you know, I've done something completely random, writing for a golf uh, website, like did a couple of uh, online courses in like business startup and, and social media marketing during lockdown as well. So lots of different things. And I guess like the more proactive you can be, especially in a time like this where we're not playing, hopefully that, that sets you up better for post cricket. And one thing we're really lucky as fresh cricketers is we get a lot of support from the the PCA our players association about preparing for life after cricket and 
that personal development side of it because even if you have a brilliant career, you know, look at someone like Marcus Trofik, you know, playing past 40, still got a lot of his working life to go and that's probably some of the longest career. So, you know, yeah. everyone's happy as that. So doing that preparation is, is really important. Yeah, exactly. It's good advice. And as you mentioned, PCA, wonderful organisation. It really is. They've helped so many cricketers over, over the years. Um, also ones without counties. And that, that's another massive thing, obviously, for those people who, well, their cricket career is pretty much uncertain. They help them through as well. So, um, yeah, not got, <laughs> not got um, anything bad to say about the PCA. They're a wonderful organisation. But, uh, yeah, kind of just to wrap up the podcast, really, Josh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, what advice would you give to any young leg spinners out there who are maybe just starting off in the trade? I think just that, probably two things, Aaron. Like, first of all, what I said about having that enjoyment and love for it when you're young, because if that stays with you, like, you know, it never feels like hard work and you're motivated to do it. Like, so doing what you enjoy, finding what you enjoy in cricket. So if it is leg spinning, brilliant, you know guess bowl with a smile on your face and enjoy it but also that you know really try and learn and, and watch leg spinners on tv you know do i guess like now like with youtube there's loads of tu- like tutorials or just listening to people talk about spin really so i think just if you can do those two things like you know you've probably got a really good chance of being successful but even if you don't you're still going to enjoy it so that would probably be my my two things i'd say well yeah cool. you have to, you have to enjoy it and obviously as a bowler, you expect to get pumped. It just happens, especially as a spinner. But um, yeah, talking of those master classes online, a wonderful one is the one with Rashid Khan and Shane Warne. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not actually a leg spinner. I found that so interesting. So that's probably one I'd advise for. Great, great watch thing. It's about 15 minutes long, something like that on YouTube. Just Google it. Wonderful, wonderful listen. But um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up today's podcast, Josh. Have you got anything to kind of end on? Do you want to plug the, the podcast? Yeah, if people want to listen to it, it's um, Spin Badger Podcast on iTunes, Spotify and SoundCloud, uh, on social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Spin Badger. Uh, it'd be great to hear from anyone, but yeah, I guess just uh, thanks for having me on. Aaron, really enjoyed it. Well, yeah, it's been my pleasure, obviously. It's always nice to have an ex Warwickshire player on. I wish you the best of luck in your, in your career with Yorkshire, but uh, just don't play well against the Bears. Um, but uh, yes. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be putting the links to that in the description. Please do go and check it out. It's a wonderful podcast. Got some great guests on there. It's a wonderful insight into the world of spin. But uh, yeah, that wraps up today's podcast. To all those who've listened, thank you very much for tuning in today. And as always, guys, enjoy the rest of your day.